the annual Parkinson's Symposium that Gunderson Health puts on, which is a wonderful thing to do, uh, very informative always, and it's, it's a pleasure to be a part of. I've been a part of it for the last three years. Um, I was speaking at it a couple of years ago. But this past year was great uh, just because of the sense of community it brings you. It's nice to be able to sit in a room full of people that are suffering the same, same thing that you are. A lot of people approach me actually asking how I was doing, and I ask them the same thing because we can ask each other how we're doing. And so it's nice to hear, hear back from some folks that they're wondering how I am when I'm concerned how they are. Each year there's, uh, there's doctors from Gunderson. My, my personal doctor, Dr. Rachel B. Miller, she's fantastic. Uh, she spoke this year and she spoke last year. Um, sometimes they bring in an expert from outside, an outside hospital that uh, speaks to one, one portion of the, uh, of the disease, one malady or something. This year, Dr. B. Miller spoke of uh, the new treatments coming down the line, which is fantastic to hear each year because I'm always interested in that to see what's, what's, what's the latest thing that can help me, can help all these patients. She had. She comes from research, actually. So she's up on that on that side of the uh, that aspect of Parkinson's. She's up with the latest research and the latest treatments. She's very interested in that and giving, giving care to her patients. Dr. Schoenberger asked me ahead of time if I would be his patient while he demonstrated a Parkinson's uh, exam, how the exam goes. So that was something that uh, I set up on stage with him, and he went through the motions with me that you do to test for Parkinson's, and they're looking for certain things. Some of the tests are eye movement and uh, hand coordination and touch your nose, touch your finger, that type of thing, and movements, hand movements, um, turning your fingers and so forth. Just to check movement because this is a movement disorder after all. So um, that was fine to be able to go through that. It's kind of funny though. He, he, he graciously called me Mr. D. I understand why because I'm a patient. It's patient confidentiality and he's, he's following the, the rules. But just after his exam was done with me and he finished his talk, it was, here's Drew Dockery in his Drew <laughs> video. So that was pretty funny. I found it funny anyway. And I think people were genuinely entertained by the, the video too, that I like to see the fact that people that have followed me have said, you're an inspiration, that, that you're doing things that we wouldn't think of doing. And I'm pleased to hear that, I guess. I'm humbled by hearing that as well, that people think that of me. I'm just a guy living his life, trying to make it through each day. Um, I don't think about what I have all the time because why do that? Just, just deal with what you got. Uh, having shown the Drew Abides videos at uh, one of the breaks, at a 10 minute break, we showed the people a kind of a, a slice of life, of my life, what it was like living with Parkinson's and they could relate of course to that. And I spoke with a, a woman that I work with there who, who brought her father, who was a uh, a recent Parkinson's diagnosis of two weeks prior to the conference, he got diagnosed with Parkinson's. And she gave me a big hug and said, Drew, your video made me cry. I didn't realize that about you. She knew I had Parkinson's, but she said, I didn't know how, how, how you're dealing with things. And now that my dad has it, I really, I really know what, to, what it's like for you, what it must be like for you each day, because I work with her, so I see her all the time. And that was really nice. And I sat down with her and her father for about an hour then and, and uh, talked to them and got to know him and he asked me a bunch of questions. He's, he's much older than I am, but it was nice to be able to put, a, put another face on Parkinson's as somebody that I got to know on a personal basis because I know her very well. And now she can, she can come to me if she's got any questions and she's had many questions of me at work already. And if I can help her out, if I can help her dad out, that's just a victory for both of us. That's kind of nice. A number of people came up to me and said that they were interested to see what I was doing because they knew me from speaking last year. They, they said that they were pleased that I was someone who would stand, stand up and speak about it because I think a lot of those sufferers felt that maybe feel the same way or felt the same way that I did in the beginning, not so much any longer, but you kind of hide your disease because you're struggling with things. If you're in the grocery store and your hand is shaking, you're getting money out of your wallet, you know, people might be looking at you thinking, what's up, what's with that guy? You know, it's just a natural reaction. And they're probably not, but it's going through your own head sometimes that.
but now that everybody knows what I have and, and, and I'm comfortable with myself and comfortable with that, that's fine. And I think I see that in a lot of these people that I meet that they, that's as big of a struggle for some people as the disease is. So I met some two farmer reps. I, I, didn't, I met them again, let me say, because I, they remember me from last year. So I spoke to both of them. And I met a woman from the Wisconsin Parkinson's Alliance as well, which was, which was interesting and very helpful. So I can uh, get myself to a bigger audience, so to speak, um, because if I can help people, th that's a victory. Because what I'm doing is just what I want to be doing, and I'm not going to let this stop me. Like I've said, it's a yield sign, not a stop sign. And uh, if I can be an example for more people to, to continue living their lives, and that, that's a victory, that's a good thing. One of my favorite parts of the symposium this past year was an elderly patient raised their hand and asked Dr. B. Miller about the physical difficulties of beginning your day with Parkinson's and being a, a senior age patient because it's just tough to get out of bed in the morning. It's tough for me sometimes because I'm not medicated yet to get out of bed and just kind of get going. So there's an elderly woman that raised her hand and, and said, you know, what, what can you say to people who have difficulty just literally physically getting out of bed in the morning? And another elderly lady raised her hand, ran over to her with a microphone and she said, I had trouble with stiffness and didn't have the uh, strength to get in and out of bed very easily. I bought a set of satin sheets and satin pajamas. Boy, does that make it. <laughs> you gotta watch if you don't slip out of the bed. But that's, that's true. I, I used to mention that a couple times when I first started in fellowship, but then I got a lot of reports of people going, <laughs> So uh, I stopped, but you are right. And it was a wonderful response because she's being honest. But it was a great laugh. Everybody got a great joyous laugh out of it, which was so funny because who it came from, this elderly lady. But what a great example. And that's the kind of things that are positive that come out of the Parkinson's Symposium. Practical things that only us can think of. That was very helpful and very funny. I can't begin to tell you how inspiring and uplifting um, stories, you know, like that, you know, are and, and just so gratifying um, that really make uh, you know people like myself glad that we do what we do.